More than a century ago, members of the Seattle area Japanese community built the Japanese language school near the corner of Rainier and Weller. During these early days, the room served as a place for not only learning the Japanese language, but also Japanese culture and traditions. To hear a story of the school and the community center is to hear a story about us and about where we've been. Just ask Irene Shigaki. Starting with my grandfather, Gotaro,、uh, he was a carpenter and he、uh, immigrated to Seattle via Kauai, Hawaii.、Um, and when they were building the Japanese language school in about 1912, he was one of the carpenters、uh, who helped to build it. Most of the Shigaki family attended the school at one point in their lives. Many were even taught by Irene's mom, Yasuko, who spent more than 30 years as a teacher and then as principal at the Japanese language school. But the Shigaki family also saw the JLS as their home. The school served as a temporary residence for the Shigakis and dozens of other families following World War II. The buildings were coined the Hunt Hotel and helped many Japanese Americans transition from the incarceration camps. Today, Nihongo can still be heard echoing through the building's hallways and recited in its classrooms. From youngsters learning their first words through lessons and songs, to adults like Pamela Okana, a sansei who wishes to reconnect with her past and heritage. By brushing up on her Japanese. But once I started learning Japanese, I realized I knew more words than I thought I did. But they were in the back of my memory, and I had to really work to pull them up. But I think most sansei know maybe at least 100 words, but they've forgotten them. They don't realize that they know them, but when somebody says them again, you think, oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. A place of learning, a place that some of us have even called home. And for others, like D. Goto, the school is even a place where love is found. So I took some classes at the Japanese language school, which is the cultural center now. And in the class was my future sister in law. And since I had walked to the class and it was night, she took me home. And that's how my husband now, Sam, and I got started in our relationship. And so it served as a matchmaking place, too. At the community center, stories like these are permanently recorded through monthly workshops in a program called Amoide, the Japanese word for memories. More than 100 people have contributed to Amoide with their stories from the community preserved in the program's published books. The community center is a place where all generations can reconnect or even discover their Japanese family's history and legacy. In 2012, Johnny Uno Valdez joined a group hosted by the community center that plans an annual pilgrimage to the Minidoka incarceration camp in Idaho. Johnny says visiting Minidoka has helped him better understand his grandfather, who passed away in 1990. It's kind of like coming back home and it's full circle, and I don't know, it's a, it's a great honor. It's been an awesome experience. While on the pilgrimage, Johnny photographed hundreds of pictures that have been edited into a photo essay he titled My Mini Doka. They're now on display at the Japanese Cultural and Community Center's Northwest Nikkei Museum. The school and community center also serve as the cultural heartbeat for Japanese and Japanese Americans living in western Washington. Programs and performances are held year round, and weekly activities like karate, judo, and taiko are just a few of the many opportunities that help connect the local community with Japanese culture. Linda Inigawa has been practicing taiko for three years. And for me, and I think all of my classmates, this is a, a great、um, lesson not only in、uh, the, the art form of taiko, but also we learn so many things about Japan.、Um, Yeah, we have a great time. The Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Washington is where memories are born and stories from our past are preserved. <laughs>